Good morning. I'm Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine and surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton University Hospital, London. Today I'm going to talk on a meta-analysis. This meta-analysis is about looking at the medications, endometrial thickness and IUI. And the question which is asked is, is there a role of endometrial thickness in IUI? And how thin is thin? Now, first and foremost, remember that meta-analysis is not the best of research work that can be done. Meta-analysis is a desktop study into various studies and has limitations. The standard of any study is a randomized controlled trial. Meta-analysis do give us an idea about how the trend is going. This may be right or may be wrong, but gives us some idea about how a certain trend is going on. Now, today I discuss a paper which is endometrial thickness in women undergoing intrauterine insemination with ovarian stimulation, how thick is too thin, a meta-analysis published in Human Reproduction 2017 by NSVs et al. Now, what do we know happens with IUI? In intrauterine insemination with stimulation of gonadotrophins, it's a non-invasive method. Stimulation of the follicles increases endometrial growth. Data on endometrial thickness is scarce and limiting. In IUI and ovarian stimulation, endometrial thickness is assessed during IUI. A systematic review has, was conducted. Now, if you look at the quality of studies, it went from low to being moderate. They looked at one study which looked at endometrial thickness in pregnant versus non-pregnant women undergoing IUI. Two studies were looked at and women who had an average higher endometrial thickness were more likely to fall pregnant rather than those who did not. Again, this, is, this evidence was not st statistically significant. And maybe from here, we generally get an idea to say, well, if your endometrium is good, chances of pregnancy are better. If your endometrium is thin, the chances of pregnancy are not as good. The question here is, how good is that evidence? And how are we looking at any evidence that comes from literature to suggest that we should be abandoning IUI cycles when endometrium is four, five, six, or seven? Millimeter. Now let's look at the medication. Clomiphene seemed to give a thinner endometrium when compared to gonadotrophins. And what we need to look at in these cases is that every medication will have a different effect on the endometrium. So when you start looking at why is my endometrium thin? Before you blame the endometrium, start looking at the medication that you're using. Again, they looked at clomiphene versus letrozole. Clomiphene and gonadotrophins, which is a common treatment used, a combination of clomiphene and gonadotrophins versus letrozole. As soon as you used clomiphene, the endometrial thickness, even with gonadotrophins, was less. Not statistically significant, but it seemed to be less. Once again, when you combine clomiphene with gonadotrophins, it was the endometrial thickness seemed to be less than letrozole on its own. When you compared letrozole versus gonadotrophins, gonadotrophins seemed to give a thicker endometrium compared to letrozole. So again, if you look at all the three drugs, all the three drugs seem to 
stimulate the ovaries. They are reasonably successful in treatment. If we decide to see which gives you a better endometrium, a thicker endometrium, or rather, I think it would be wrong to say a better endometrium, a thicker endometrium, gonadotrophin seem to do the best. Now, in this meta-analysis, they did not look at pregnancy rates. They looked at endometrial thickness. Again, they did conclude that clomiphene gave a thinner endometrium compared to gonadotrophins. There does not seem to be a huge difference between endometrial thickness of clomiphene and letrozole. Clomiphene plus gonadotrophins give a slightly thinner endometrium than letrozole. It is important to be aware that the quality of this evidence across those multiple pool studies is still not very high grade. And again, there is very little data that looks at what should be the endometrial thickness in intrauterine insemination and what should be the pregnancy rate. Now the question which is often asked is, in IVF there is very good evidence that if as your endometrium gets thinner, your chances of pregnancy are lower. And that evidence is there. Now we're using the same evidence that we see during IVF and saying, well, your endometrium is thin, then you sh we should abandon a cycle of IUI. That evidence in literature is not con available. So we're not entirely certain if we should apply the same rules that we apply for IVF for IUI. Now, why is it that relevant? Let's take a step back. Let's think what happens in IVF. In IVF, the embryos are cultured in a low oxygen environment. Does it happen in nature? It doesn't. Now, there is a hypothesis which seems to have some amount of truth in it. Now, embryos that are cultured in an oxygen, a low oxygen tension environment, as it happens in incubators, then get replaced in a thin endometrium where the spiral arteries are closer in proximity and thus it creates a higher oxygen tension because there is a, a more exposure to the spiral arteries and thus these embryos may not implant. Now, one of the things which is very important to realize is that with thin endometrium we know in IVF pregnancy rates are lower. Now in nature, embryos seem to tolerate a high oxygen environment better. They're not cultured in a low oxygen environment and maybe in IUI, the low endometrium does not seem to have the same effect as it happens on in IVF. The other things you look for. Now, often, if you see a, a very thin endometrium, I will also look at the blood flow. You look at whether the blood flow has a good subendometrial flow. Again, it's logic. If you see a good blood flow, there's a better perfusion. And I think if you see a thin endometrium, start looking at blood flow parameters because there is some evidence as the blood flow increases, even in thin endometrium, pregnancy rates may be better. Now, in conclusion, I would start thinking is, is there a role of cancelling an IUI cycle if you have a thin endometrium? I'm not entirely certain. The evidence doesn't seem to be there. Next, which drugs are better? And we have discussed that before. You compare for ovulation induction in PCOS, gonadotrophins signif do significantly better, but that's in PCOS. We do it for unexplained infertility. We don't know. We don't know exactly which drug is significantly better. We have done a few of these reviews where we looked at gonadotrophins versus clomiphene versus letrozole. I hope if you, you would share this video. Again, every week we'd put one or two teaching sessions on. You're free to email us on fertilitycloses at gmail.com if you wish any of your cases to be discussed. When I'm on my NHS, I'll be more than happy to discuss these cases. Thank you very much.